<sighs> now we wait and wait and wait because it takes a long time for most journals to review articles. Eventually, you're going to get a letter back saying there are a lot of things wrong with the paper. This is normal. Don't freak out. Um, read the letter. Take a few days off and calm down. Never, ever get in a frenzy about this and immediately start calling people or talking to people or sending emails. And typically, in my experience, there are four levels of reviews. If your paper gets accepted the first time around, you did a great job. This almost never happens. It's really good work. Um, sometimes you get accept pending minor optional revisions. This is really excellent work, but the reviewer to feel good about themselves wants you to make some changes. Make the changes unless they're contradictory. Write a nice letter to the editor saying how smart the reviewer is and what a clever job they did um, and how much better your paper is because of this. The third one is you can accept pending major revisions. This is a very good paper. Make the changes. Highlight each change in your manuscript to make it easy for the reviewer and the editor to find exactly what you changed. Then write a letter to the reviewers and the editor and explain how you addressed all of the concerns. But be nice about this. Don't say the person's an idiot. And if your paper gets rejected, um, either it deserved to get rejected or the reviewer's a jerk. Both things happen. And you can fight the review with your advisor if you want to, withdraw the paper, or even submit to a less prestigious journal. And this is a, something your advisor is going to probably decide to do. And there's a famous rule of paper acceptance out there that in any journal, 50% of the papers are published by well-known people in the field, 20% slipped through somehow, 20% are really good papers, and about 10% are affirmative action papers. Um, so to sort of wrap this up, there's some things you need to do before, during, and after you write. The first is to be organized. You won't do this, and you're going to regret not doing it later, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Write the paper as you do your research. As you build your experiment or run your simulation, write a few paragraphs in a figure describing your work in Word or some other word processing program. You're going to have to publish it anyway, and it's going to be a lot harder to do it months later. So get in the habit of writing stuff down as you do it. Keep figure files and original data together in the same folder. I said this before, but if it takes nine months for your paper to re be reviewed and you have to redo some figures, it's going to be hard to find that data again unless it's in the same place. Um, it's not plagiarism to build off your own work. Start to keep a folder of boilerplate you can use for different papers, but make sure you don't copy things exactly. Beware of the copyright violations and what the limitations are on this. But we all do this, and it's good to have this boilerplate if you become a professor or go out and have to write proposals later. Um, enter references into EndNote or whatever software you have as you read them. And make a file of papers you've read in PDF format. And I use something where I put a big, long title on the file name or the file name is very long so I know what paper it is and I can keep these things straight. Um, also remember that reading and writing papers is going to get easier the more you do it, but you have to do it to get better at it. You've got to continually practice and refine your writing. And even though you know what you're writing about really well when you write it, six months later, most of it's going to be gone. So think about how to organize your work so it's easy to make association between your notes, the paper, the code you developed, your samples, your collaborators, all these things that are important. And if you figure out that last point, uh, please give me a call and let me know how you did it because it's something I've not been able to do well my entire life. And remember that what you write is the only record that you're going to leave. And quality counts more than quantity. I cannot s stress that enough, particularly as you advance in your career. So I'll end at this point. Here are some resources that I read to put this little talk together. Um, it's been a while since I've made this slide, so probably some of these have disappeared into the, the nether world of the Internet. But go ahead and look at some of those because it may help your writing.